hello everyone welcome back so uh, this week we talked about uh, one day photonic crystals and how photonic band gaps are created and so on and in addition to providing the overview i wanted to give you some uh, tools that can help you if in case you are doing research in this area so uh, f- to that end i have published i know we have done some calculations using what is known as steam matrix i introduced just in the first lecture today this week and we published that on github so for example if you go to github.com and this is a link and uh, look for my name nareesh himani and then nqp public so this is a public repository we have for this particular course and uh, if you look at this folder t matrix ipath and notebooks so we have published several notebooks uh, three of them to be precise so the first one i want to look at is this t matrix code we have essentially taken uh, the formulation given in pochi's textbook lay optics optical waves in layered media and then you can look at that chapter and then you will understand the details but broadly you know we have discussed this in the class we i just introduced the uh, the ideas so what you have is essentially let's say you have a layered stack this is a substrate and a superstrate how do we compute you know the t matrix for that so some of these examples are given here so you see i mean this is for a particular case wherein we have reproduce the data that is provided in this textbook by orphanedis so we try to take the same examples and look at uh, how the output will be so to that and what you see is you know there is a superstrate substrate and the wavelength at which we want to calculate let's say and then the high and the low refractive indices and so on and uh, i mean the code is more or less self explanatory if you follow the formulation and look at the code you will understand how it goes and so some basic uh, uh flags to make sure that you know we don't uh, we don't compute wrongly for the case of one, zero layers and so on and then finally these are variables that we are just defining zeros to capture the reflection coefficient so <laughs> my notation of rrr is that you know i'll i'll basically the first uh, uh first dimension is basically the te or the tm polarization second dimension is angle third dimension is a wavelength similarly i have a ttt and a a a so basically essentially the first dimension will give you the t or tm angle and then third dimension so if you are familiar with python you will you will understand these things and then there is some basic matrices that we define for substrate and superstrate uh, ds matrices uh, for p and s polarization as well so the four of them here and then if you look into the details you will understand that you know these definitions are there in the textbook uh, pre- more you know specifically these particular substrate matrices i have not mentioned in the class so you'll have to look at the textbook for this but fairly the same similar idea like the mat- matrices we define for the layers right the same I- idea uh, follows in the same this also and then you just basically start with the first layer and then just keep computing over the number of layers essentially okay and one key point here is this uh, dynamical matrices the propagation matrix i mentioned so exponential jkx uh, or jkd and then exponential minus jkd so this is the 2 by 2 matrix here you know we defined it as an array here and then similarly there is a dp matrix and the ds matrix so for dynamical matrix for p polarization and s polarization so if you look back at my notes i think uh, for the probably one of these polarizations maybe the tm polarization i i wrote it as cos theta and then cos theta and 1 and minus 1 probably in the lecture notes but it should be an n and minus n and similarly the for the te polarization 1 and 1 n cos theta minus n cos theta so these are the matrices and then once you have the matrix it's simply matter of you know doing matrix multiplication the specific details of how it is implemented is given here and then finally once we do that so we already defined the reflectance as basically m21 by m11 so m21 in the language of python you know indices uh, start from zero so for m21 essentially is mp10 divided by mp00 means this is the 11 that we mentioned you know the first element on the top so this is the reflection and then this is transmission transmission was 1 by m11 so that mp00 reflects that because the indices start from zero and then similarly th- these are the field reflection coefficients and amplitude reflection coefficients are simply square so the field square and then simply this one that's it okay so for te and tm polarizations you can calculate once you do that you can just simply plot nothing else and then we get these figures that you know we have already shown in the course all right 
So this was this is how you can use this. And one more you know, example we have taken, and then the polarizer example I believe this is. So wherein we show that okay at uh, 45 degrees if you come in, you will see that most of the light goes into the transmission. The T M polarization goes into transmission. Transmission nearly one, whereas the T E polarization gets reflected. Right. So that's that's all uh, we have. So these are the examples. So you can use this to try to adapt it to your own applications. Anywhere you have layered structures, I think you can use this code. It's freely available online. Just go and log in, and then you can download these notebooks and modify as you see fit. All right. So uh, this is about the T matrix. I also had one interesting, you know. Uh, uh, so that was the open folder. So you have again, you know, other notebooks as well. So this is, you know, the one D photonic crystal example. Now we have studied in our course about the the band gap opening, the photonic band gap, right? So again, the same code we just adapted to the 1D photonic crystal example case. So what you see here uh, is this is still orphanage. So let me go here. Yeah. So this is my local this thing. I am actually running the Jupyter notebook, and specifically, you know, I I have what is known as Anaconda software, Anaconda software, which you can install, and then you can launch either notebook or lab. Uh, in my case, you know, it turns out that I, it's better if I launch notebook, and then I just uh, open the notebook here, and then what you will see here is, uh, yeah, this this particular case which we discussed, we said that there is a gallium arsenide air multi-layer stack consisting of some number of layers, and essentially you have 13 and 1 is a refractive indices, and if you have this large contrast, we said that you know the thickness is, equal, is both, both the thicknesses of these slabs are equal. And then there's a large band gap that opens, and in the class I mentioned that see if you have such a scenario, you see that from normalized frequency of 0.15 to 0.25, you have very you know, there's there's a band gap, so the air, uh, light cannot propagate in that, and we would expect reflection. And I showed you this graph as well in the course that you know you have this peak in reflection coming right about 0.15 uh, normalized frequency to about 0.25 plus, right? This is the band. And we also mentioned that okay, if you have this very large contrast, you have to do exact numerical calculations for the band structure. That approximations that I mentioned in the lecture will not work. So this is exact numerical calculation using uh, T-matrix approach. So how did we generate this? Well, the same code, everything is same except we just made some modifications to the inputs. You now we took the number of layers and the superstrate, substrate, and so on, the wavelength sweep. Now what we do is the A parameter we try to sweep. Okay. And then we try to see what happens as you change the basically normalized frequency, right? So we are actually saying this is a by lambda. So fix the lambda and change a, or you know, as vice versa, you can do however you feel like. So uh, so once you change a, wavelength automatically becomes this, and then you uh, sweep. I mean, you know, the basic definitions. The one place where uh, I mean, well, there's nothing much actually. After that, everything else is same. Nothing else changes. Uh, the important thing where we mentioned yeah thickness of the layer right so here we mentioned that the high index and the low index are half and half that's it okay that's it once we do that you get this graph no no big uh, change and similarly we had seen one more example of uh, uh, this multi layer stack but this time with thickness of 0.2 and 0.8 the periodicity so we change the thickness so that we get a tuning of the band gap so i mentioned this as well so again the same example Everything else remains same as the previous case, except that we change uh, the thickness of the layers. So everything else is same. So you see this refract uh, square root of 13 is a, epsilon is 13. So square root of 13 is high index, and uh, here the thickness of the layers, high index layer we took it to be a by phi, the low index layer a into 4 by phi. That's it. Once we do that, everything else goes back, and then you get this nice curve, which we have already shown in the class. All right. So this is how T matrix is useful. So all of this is uh, openly available to you. So please uh, feel free to use it. And uh, I hope it's uh, of use to you guys. All right. I'll see you in the next week. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.